Got another question on the condensation polymers topic and as always the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay so for part A we've just got to turn this repeat unit into the monomer glutamic acid so all we need to do is put an H on here turn that into an NH2 group and put an OH there and turn that into a carboxyl group. The next part is quite tricky I would say, so the way I'm going to tackle it is we're going to first of all work out the MR of glutamic acid, so that's our starting material. So that's coming out at 147, so what we'll do now is we'll compare the M over Z value for these two compounds that have formed and see how we can go from glutamic acid to 129, glutamic acid to 258. So we'll start with the lighter one. So how do we get 129 from 147? We subtract 18. So what's happened? Well, we must have taken a glutamic acid molecule and lost a water molecule effectively. So there's my glutamic acid. So I need to take a water molecule out and think, how is that possible? Well, this amino group here can interact with this carboxyl group at the other end of the molecule. So if we take these atoms off and then sort of turn this into a ring, that's going to give us a substance with an MR of 129, which means it's going to look like that. So if we move on to the 258 now, so how can we get to 258 from 147? Well, if we take two of these, two 147s, and then subtract from that 36, we're going to generate this 258. So what must have happened? Two glutamic acids have lost two water molecules. Now there's a couple of ways this can happen. So I'll show you both ways. So there's two side by side. We can see I've flipped this one because I want the functional groups that are interacting with each other to be next to each other. So if we take out a water molecule at this end and this end, we're going to form sort of a big ring there. Now, it's not the prettiest looking molecule, but that's one of the options. So hopefully you can appreciate how that's happened. And the other way two of these can join together is if we take still the NH2 group, but now the other COOH group. So I've redrawn it sort of again, positioning the key functional groups opposite each other. So we'll just do the same again. We'll get rid of a water molecule here and a water molecule here and then turn what's left into a ring, which gives a structure that looks like that. Part B now, so the functional groups in polymer J, well, they've been a bit awkward here by splitting the ester group across at either end of the molecule. So anyway, that's an ester group and that's an amide group. So B part two now, we've got to come up with the structures of two different monomers to form polymer J. You'll notice I've put this red line here, so that's where the join is. So what could this have been to start with? Well, we could have had a, either a dicarboxylic acid or it could have been a diacyl chloride. For this right-hand monomer, we're going to need an NH2 group here. This needs to be an alcohol group, which means the monomer is going to look like that. And the last question suggests why polymer J is able to be washed away easily with hot water. Well, it's got this group here, this amide group. It's also got ester groups as well, and both of them can be hydrolyzed. 